fact that the Lord brought you here today means he wants to bless you. So we have come to worship him. He has been faithful to us. May his name be lifted high in the name of Jesus. Take this worship. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the grace you have given unto us. We appreciate you because you have been faithful to us. We glorify your name for another opportunity you have given us to come. Many slept last night and they didn't wake up. But by your love and mercy, you have gathered us again. May your name be lifted high in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we go into this little exhortation, may every man disappear. Let your name be glorified. At the end of this exhortation, O oh Lord, may your children be blessed. May your name be lifted high in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, cause me to say something that will free your children from every error. Cause me to say something that will make your children to be happy. Cause me to say something that will glorify your name. Cause me to say something that will edify, that will comfort in the name of Jesus. Give you all the glory. Many are still on their way. Why they are coming, oh Lord, protect them. Hasten their footsteps. Take away any barrier that may stand on their way. Lord, let no evil happen to them on the way. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we pray. If you are happy to be in his presence, jam your hands together unto the Lord. Children of God, you may have your seats. Hallelujah.
Tell somebody by your side, you're welcome to Sunday morning worship. Yes, I want to give little exhortation on a message I titled Acceptable Sacrifice. Acceptable Sacrifice slash Service. Hallelujah. We, the children of God, we offer sacrifices unto the Lord, but it takes the revelation of God to know what to do for such sacrifice or service to be acceptable by our God. So this morning, we are going to be looking at some of the reasons why many people don't get results, although they have done sacrifices or they have done certain services in the house of God. We're also going to look at some of the ways we can offer our sacrifices and heaven will accept it. Hallelujah. Praise God. So if you look at the screen, the message title is Acceptable Sacrifice. And we take our scriptures from 1 Peter chapter 2 from verse 1 to 5. The second slide, I read. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guy and hypocrisies and envies, all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the world that he may grow thereby. Yes. If so be ye have tested that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Verse 5. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Children of God, this scripture is not talking to unbelievers out there. The scripture is talking to we, the children of God. Hallelujah. Go back to that slide. Let's look at the word sacrifice. The meaning of sacrifice. A sacrifice is an act of giving up something valued for the sake of something else regarded as more important or worthy. Amen. When you go to offer sacrifice, there is something you have in mind. Of course, you cannot offer sacrifice except there is something you want to appease. Amen. That definition says it is the act of offering something to something that is higher. It means our sacrifice is unto the Lord because God is higher than every other thing. Hallelujah. So as children of God, our sacrifice should be unto our God because our God is higher. He said a sacrifice is an act of giving up something valued for the sake of something else regarded as more important or worthy. Hallelujah. You are seeking something from the Lord. You're asking from the Lord. You want to receive from Him. Hallelujah. Then you are compelled to offer a sacrifice. That sacrifice can spawn from sacrifice of thanksgiving. It can also spawn from sacrifice of praises. There is also sacrifice of prayers. But how are we going to perform this sacrifice of services that God will accept it? Praise God. Let's go back to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, chapter, verse, verse 1 to 5. Let's look at verse 5. Verse 5. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. Praise God. Now, why would the scripture refer to us 
as lively stones. Church, this is a class, so this is a class. You know, in a class, everybody participates. Sometimes, in a class, when you gather the children, they will give you chorus answer. Unknown to you, even those who give the chorus answer, some of them don't know. When you ask as a teacher, do you understand? They will tell you, yes, including those who don't understand. So, in a class like this, please make out your time to pay attention. You will understand it. So, why are we referred to as lively stones or living stones? How can a stone be alive? If you go out there now and pick a stone and pick a stone, it is lifeless. But here in the Bible, we as children of God are referred to as living stones. You know why? If you go back to the temple of Jerusalem, we all know that the stones and the materials used in building the temple were gathered, not by Solomon, but by who? Students, if you know, you say it louder. By who? By David. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Now, it is talking about the body of Christ. Each stone in that temple was fitted in. We know the story. It's not a new scripture in this ministry. Praise God. Every stone was fitted in where it is supposed to be without hammer, without chisel, without schism, without argument, without quarreling, without a fight. Every stone occupied its space. No fight. One stone did not say, I am bigger. Therefore, I should take over the whole place. Now, that's, those stones now came together in that building and formed the whole temple. The temple of Jerusalem. The place of worship of God. Where sacrifice, holy sacrifices were performed. Praise God. I will establish something here. Now, the Bible referred to us as living stones. Those stones that were used in the temple, were they alive? Answer me now, church. Were they alive? They were just stones. But why is it that in this age, under grace, the Bible is referring to us that form the body of Christ as living stones? Praise God. So automatically, we know by revelation that those stones are you and me. Clap your hands for the Lord Jesus. Praise God. So we are referred to as lively stone, living stone. It means we, as children of God, are not called to do any other thing other than to perform holy and acceptable sacrifice unto the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Let's look at verse 7 of it. Verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 7. Unto you therefore which believe, he is what? Precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Now church, this scripture is referring to who? So who? The Lord Jesus. So Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. What is the duty of the cornerstone? The duty of the cornerstone is to determine where the direction of the building will take. If it's moving in a particular direction, it's a big pillar. It is upon this cornerstone that every revelation is built. It's upon this cornerstone that every Scripture gets its power and inspiration. It is on this cornerstone that every other pillar is laid upon. It is on this cornerstone that every corner, every angle, the building, the shape it will take is hinged upon. And who is this stone? The Lord Jesus. 
That is why he is referred to as the chief cornerstone. Then, if he is the chief cornerstone, it means other stones will be built on top of it. So from what? The whole body. Talking about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have one duty to do what? Offer spiritual sacrifices and services unto the Lord. Praise God. The next slide. Let's look at that second slide. Praise God. Let's look at Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans 12, verse 1. Leave this slide there. Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Praise God. Thank you. Church, before you could offer sacrifice acceptable unto the Lord, you must first of all offer yourself. Praise God. You must offer yourself first as a sacrifice. Then you will be qualified to offer acceptable sacrifice unto the Lord. Praise God. If God does not accept your person, your sacrifice will not be accepted. If you performing the sacrifice or service unto the Lord, the creator of heavens and earth does not accept your person, how can you be qualified to offer sacrifice acceptable unto him? Hallelujah. Then how can you offer yourself? Let's look at that slide. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. The first sacrifice to be offered is what? Oneself. Before one can offer an acceptable sacrifice, let's look at it, or service unto God, you must offer yourself. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 14. Hebrews 2, 14. Let's look at Jesus. He said, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he himself also Likewise took part of the same. Look at that scripture. Of what? The same. He became also a man. He also became a child. That through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Go ahead. For verily he took not on him the nature of angel, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things, it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make re reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Praise God. So, before Christ started, what did he do? He was washed. Hallelujah. Children of God, for the fact that he was washed, he went through water baptism, was he dirty? Answer me now, church. Was he dirty? He wasn't dirty. But he was showing us something. A way to do what? Perform acceptable sacrifice. You must be clean. You must be clean in every way. The cleanliness we are talking about in Christianity, it is not how whitish your church, your cloth is. It is not how neat you dress. It is not the designer's clothes or suits you are wearing. It is not how eloquent you can speak. It is not even what you say. It is what you do. Praise God. So, you must be washed. Christ showed us the pattern. In offering a sacrifice, you offer yourself a sacrifice. For heaven to accept your person, then your sacrifice will be accepted. Then how can you offer yourself? You must be clean. Is it possible for a, a vessel to be 
unclean and the content clean. Church, let's look at it. You have a vessel. The vessel, the inside of that vessel is very dirty. And you pour water on it. What will happen? Say it louder. It will be what? There will be a contamination. And if there is a contamination, will you be able to drink? The, can you drink the water? What will happen to it? It is not accepted. Even your system will not take it. If you take it, you might need to be treated. Hallelujah. Let's go back to that slide. Now, if God does not accept your person, he cannot accept your sacrifice. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 21. 2 Timothy. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Yes? Verse 22. Flee also youthful loss, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord. Out of what? Out of what, church? Pure heart. Praise God. So for your sacrifice to be acceptable to heaven, you must purge yourself. Purge yourself from where? Purge yourself from uncleanness. There are many vessels there. That great man's house is not a house of party. It is not a social gathering. The great man's house is the church of the Lord Jesus. So we are talking about the gathering of Christians. Purge yourself. How can you purge yourself? Let's go back to that slide. Let's go to Ephesians 5, 25 to 26. Let's go to verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with a washing of water by the word. 27. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, if you are blemish, your sacrifice will not be acceptable. Hallelujah. If you are blemish, your sacrifice, you are not clean, your sacrifice will not be acceptable. Hallelujah. And the Lord has given us and shown us a way through which one can get himself purged in every way. Cleansed. So that when you stand to offer him a sacrifice, heaven will accept it. Hallelujah. The Bible says we are sanctified by the washing of the water, by the word that he might present us to himself a glorious church. Hallelujah. And faith cometh by hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. Cleansing. Praise Master Jesus. Let's go back to the slide. Now, there are major qualifications to offer acceptable sacrifice and services unto God. Somebody, the first one here say Covenant. Covenant. Such sacrifice must be offered under the new covenant order, which is what? Echo it. What is the new covenant order? Grace. In case you don't know, let's go to John chapter 1 verse 17. John 1 17 first. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So how many covenants do we have? How many? What are they? And say it louder. The law and grace. For the sake of those that are coming for the first time, you may have heard something different from this. We have only two covenants. You may also refer to it as testament. It is the same. Grace and truth. Praise God. So under grace, I know we are under the grace. 
But if you are under grace as a Christian, and your sacrifice is still taking the old order, I bet you such sacrifice will not be accepted. Do you agree with me, church? Praise God. If you are under the grace, let's go to that slide. If you are under the grace and your sacrifice is still taking the old order, such sacrifice will not be acceptable. Praise God. Let's go to Hebrew chapter 8, verse 1 to 13. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is a psalm. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which is the Lord, pitch and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have someone also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was the admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, said he, that thou make all things according to the pattern, should thee to end the mount. But now that you obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promise. So grace is a better covenant than law. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Some of us sometimes we forget. Some of the things we do, even though we are still, we are under the grace, reveal sometimes that we are still operating under the old order. The covenant of grace is better. Some of the actions we take, sometimes it might be referred to take some prayers in a certain way that lacks revelation of grace. Praise God. Praise Master Jesus. I remember some time ago when I came newly here, when demolition of the church happened, a lot of things left with it. There were so many, so many, so many strangers that seized the opportunity of the freedom in the ministry. And if you come newly, you don't know. Thank God for what we have now. Hallelujah. That day, I remember I was passing. Somebody called me. said, come. I see a spirit following you. I don't know. I didn't know. He said, but this is what you are going to do. The person that gave me that prayer and that action to do left with the demolition. Because I'm not, I didn't see her again after the church came down. Praise God. He said, go and buy a pig. Take it to the market. Move around the market with it. After which, leave the pig. Take 20 naira. Look for a beggar. Give the beggar the 20 naira. And I'm telling you, you will come and thank me and testify. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Somebody that came to church to look for a solution. You say, go and buy a pig. I didn't carry it out. Church, such sacrifice, is it acceptable to heaven? Praise God. What happened to the blood of the lamb that was slain? You see where I'm going? What happened to the blood of he that hung on the cross? The blood of Jesus. The Bible says, speak at better things than the blood of Abel. Now, such sacrifice, you might do it judiciously because you need solution. But did heaven accept it? Did heaven accept it? No. Sometimes you hear people in un, why, under grace telling you, see, the Lord has done something for you. The Lord has delivered you from this sickness. So go and buy something that has life and offer it 
give to God as a sacrifice. Children of God, let me tell you, even as I'm speaking to you, people are still doing it. No matter how much it is echoed here, people are still doing it. It is because you don't pay attention. How can you buy something that has life? The blood of the animal cannot take away sin. The blood of Jesus Christ has settled it all. Praise God. Praise Master Jesus. That even reminds me, when, when, when my first daughter was born, my mother-in-law, my wife went through a lot in that pregnancy. My mother-in-law, while she was living, said, you must give God something that has life. I was looking at her. Inside my mind, I was saying, I wish you would give me money to buy that thing that has life. Let me know. I know what to do. Praise God. I say, okay, no problem. Praise Master Jesus. That is the teaching going on out there. Give God something that has life. See, a life has been offered on the cross. If you give God something that has life with the mindset to appease the spirit that saved you from dying, you have wasted your money. And I'm telling you, heaven will not accept it. Praise God. So, while we are under the grace, do not perform your sacrifice or services under the old order. It will not be accepted. Praise God. Do you know that there are members of, leave this slide there, there are members of, of this church that are still observing the eighth day of childbirth. Am I right? Praise God. Naming. The, the child was born on a Saturday, so he will be named next week, Sunday. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why? It is in the Bible. No. Don't do that. Whatever you do, having that mindset will not be accepted. There will be no reward for anything you perform unto the Lord. Having that mindset is lack of revelation. Praise God. Don't do it. See, you can name your child even that day the child was born. You can name your child even on the eighth day. But let it not be that you're standing on the eighth day doctrine. Now, there, there are provisions there. There are provisions, turtle dove, um, pigeon, this and that. Why is it that after naming on the eighth day, other things will not be provided? Apostle Paul say, those of you that are standing under the law, if you obey nine and break one, what happens? The rest does not make sense. The second one is sound doctrine. Your sacrifice or service must be offered under the fivefold ministry order. The scripture is in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 14. We know the scripture. Praise God. Sound doctrine. Hallelujah. One of those things is, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth, this is the emphasis, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by this slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive you. Hallelujah. That place you are going to seek solution. Are they operating under the sound doctrine? You may be here. You have done your sacrifices. You have stayed long. You have prayed, you have fasted. When you feel the result is not coming, or what you are looking for is not coming, some run to and fro many places in search of solution. Praise God. Unknown to you, the place you are running to, you are better than the man of God in that place. 
Have you not been to a place, perhaps you, you, you visited a church with a friend and in seeing um, some of these funny, funny places, the prayer is going on one after the other and when it is your turn, have you not witnessed somebody telling you, you should be the one that will pray for me? I, uh, there is something in you. Praise God. I shouldn't pray for you. What you carry, I don't have it. Whoever has that experience, what you carry, I don't have it. Praise God. Then, why did you go to that place in the first place? It is lack of what? Revelation. Those places that are not operating sound doctrine, don't go there to perform your sacrifice. Heaven will not accept it because of who you are. Hallelujah. For instance, somebody is not baptized. Correct water baptism. Under the five-fold ministry order. By a mansion and in the name of Jesus. And you are going to his church. And he's carrying you to the water to wash you. Praise God. You are going to a church where a woman is standing. As a pastor. After you have had the truth. And you are going there to perform your sacrifice. Can I tell you what happened? You have wasted your time. Don't do that. It will not be acceptable. Why? It is a wrong doctrine. Praise God. Praise Master Jesus. Let's look at the next, next slide. Some reasons many people don't get blessed. Number one here, misplacement of one's ministry. I hope we, we are well tutored in this. When we say ministry, your gift, the gift you operate also determines your ministry. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? Your gift determines your ministry. The gift you operate speaks volume of the ministry God has placed you. Let's look at this slide. Romans 12, 4 to 8. Romans chapter 12. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one member one another, having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the profession of faith, or ministry, let us with one or Wait, let us wait on our ministry or he that teacheth on teaching. Yes. Or he that exhorted on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Praise God. It is self-explanatory. God has given you a ministry. For instance... You are an evangelist. He is waiting for you there in the field. But instead of that, you are seeking a place in the office of the prophetic. Church, you will not get blessed. No matter how long you stay there, you will never get blessed. Praise God. Why? That is not your office. It means whatever you're doing there is not recognized by heaven. Praise God. Or you find yourself you are a pastor. Praise Master Jesus. You also strive you do everything possible to see if you can operate prophetic. Praise Master Jesus. Praise God. It may not work. Hallelujah. You are a teacher. Remain in teaching. You are a prophet. Stay in that ministry. God has given you the gift to praise him. Where is your place? There. God has given you money to give. What is your ministry? Children of God, every ministry may not end up with microphone. 
Not too many people know this. Every ministry may not end up in microphone. You may, your ministry may not give you the opportunity to speak to the world. Your ministry may not give you the opportunity to face the people like this. Your ministry. And if you strive, you force yourself into such ministry, you will remain there and grow old. And you know what? There will be no blessing that will attach to it. Praise God. There is... Oh, Jesus. You have burden to intercede. If you don't do it, you will not get blessed. Praise God. Let's look at number two. Pride. You may be in your ministry, but if you add pride to it, you will not get blessed. Let's look at Romans 12, verse 3. Romans 12, verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Praise God. Pride. Hallelujah. We know Apostle Paul, we use as an example always. Praise God. Let's look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Philippians 3, 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. The next one. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Praise Master Jesus. With all the grace God bestowed on him, Paul said he had not arrived. What is he speaking of? Humility. Children of God, there is lifting in humility. There is upliftment in what? Humility. No matter the level of grace God has bestowed on you, don't add pride to it. Praise God. When you look at what is going on out there today, you will see men of God. Oh, Jesus. Men of God have stepped into the place of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost has stepped aside. Hallelujah. Men have displayed this grace as if it belonged to them. Men have displayed this grace as if they gave it to themselves. Humble yourself. Let's look at Philippians 3, 3 to 9. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence. I'm still reading. And have no confidence in the flesh. Verse 4. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he had whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Why? Why should he also have confidence in himself? Verse 5. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me? Those I counted loss. For who? Oh, Jesus. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Hallelujah. He possessed all this grace and he still humbled himself. So anytime you are in your ministry, no matter how known or what you think is significant that ministry might be, according to your thinking, if you add price to it, there will be no result. Humble yourself. The next one is motive, your purpose. 
James chapter 4. 1, 2, 3. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come there not hence even of your lust that war in your members? You lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your loss. Praise God. The sacrifice you are performing, what is in your mind? What is the purpose for which you are paying that sacrifice? Praise God. Are you helping that brother? And the reason you're helping that brother is because you want to get blessed and not because you want to show love. You know why? There is blessing in giving. It is established. Praise God. Luke chapter 6 said so. Verse 38. There is blessing in what? Giving. Abundance. Running over. Shaking together. We men also give to your bosom. He said the measure you give, it will also be the same measure unto you. What is your motive of that sacrifice? If your motive is selfish, it will not produce results. Praise God. Another one is wrong sacrifice. Church, there is a wrong sacrifice. Let's look at Genesis chapter 4. Why do I call it wrong sacrifice? And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruits of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Let's go. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. The next slide. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wrought, and his countenance fell. Why did I call it wrong offering? I don't know a better adjective. Praise God. Now, Cain's offering, was it blemish? Class. Blemish. Will you say his offering was blemish? You know the meaning of blemish? Praise God. What Cain did was that he did not offer the sacrifice that was needed at that time. Praise God. What sacrifice was needed that time? Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. So by revelation, the brother caught the revelation and performed the right sacrifice. Praise God. So if you offer the wrong sacrifice, it will not be accepted. Even though the sacrifice must be beautiful. Hallelujah. What will I use as an instance? Praise God. Now, somebody is living on a mud house and you want to uh, you want to give him infrastructure. You want to help him. And what do you do? You bring electricity into the mud house. You dig borehole in the same mud house. Is it right? Church, is it right? What should you do? What do you do first? Remove the mud house first. Give him a better block and cement house. Then bring in electricity. Bring in borehole. Bring in other things. Praise God. Let's look at this slide. Wrong timing. Wrong timing. If the time you offer your sacrifice is not the right time, it will not produce results. Praise God. Let's look at Psalm 145 verse 15. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat. When? Church, when? In due season. A scripture sp speaks about a servant whom his master lived, left in charge of his household to give them food. When? In due season. There is meat in due season. There is a season for every sacrifice. 
praise God. If the season of the sacrifice is not yet and you perform it, it will not achieve the result. What is example of the season? Praise God. What season are we now? We are at the end time. What message should we be preaching now? End time message. Home going message. And you are standing at the altar to tell the people that the Lord will prosper them. As your message every day, that meat is not fit for the season. It is not the meat for the season. Men of God out there, you are not giving the children meat in due season. The season we are into is not the season of you will inherit the earth. It is not the season the world belongs to you. It is not the season do this and you will prosper. It is a season that will prepare the children of God for home going. That is meat in due season. Praise God. We know the scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 8. 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 8. Let's look at it. 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 8. And thou, this is, this is Samuel speaking to who? Saul. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal. And behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shall thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. Praise God. Now, this is an instruction from Samuel to who? Saul. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 1 to 14. Saul reigned one year, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, praise God, Saul chose him 3,000 men of Israel, whereof 2,000 were with such in Michmash and in Mount Bethel, and 1,000 were with Jonathan in Gilbar or Benjamin, and the rest of the people he sent. Go to verse 8. Verse 8. And he tarried seven days, according to the set time Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. Verse 9. And Saul said, Bring it a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings, and he offered the burnt offering. Verse 10. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, what happened? Church, what happened? And Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. The next verse. And Samuel said, what hast thou done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mill Marsh. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said unto him, see what it cost him. Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandments of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. The Lord had commanded him to be captain over his people because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Wrong timing. Praise God. Wrong timing. Wait for the time appointed. We know the story of Moses in Egypt. He wanted to take the ministry by himself. What happened? It was God that saved him, that they didn't kill him. He ran away. It lasted 40 years later. Children of God, age is not a determinant of your ministry. Don't say, I am getting old. You are not the one that called yourself. You are not the one that owns the ministry. It belongs to who? It belongs to God. Wait for your time. God knows when to use you. When he wants to use you, he will call you at that time. Don't be so much in a haste. 
that sacrifice may not be accepted. Last one, lack of revelation. Matthew 16, 13 to 19. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I the son of man am? And they said, some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or of the prophets, or one of the prophets, he said unto them, but whom sayeth ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Revelation. If you are offering that sacrifice without revelation, how would you know which is the right way to perform that sacrifice? The Lord said, I re it repented me of making man. I would destroy the earth with a flood. I would destroy the man that I have made. But in verse 8 of Genesis chapter 6, what happened? Noah found grace. What was the grace? The Lord revealed unto him what to do to escape the flood. Praise God. So, in this age, at this hour, what do we need to perform acceptable sacrifice? Shout it louder. Church, shout it louder. If you don't have revelation, how would you know which is the right message to preach? If you don't have revelation, how would you know the agenda of God? If you don't have revelation, how would you know the divine agenda and program of God? How do we know the hour you are into to know the right prayer to pray? Praise Master Jesus. Bow down your heads. Father, we thank you. Begin to appreciate the name of the Lord. Pray and tell God, Father, give me the grace to perform acceptable sacrifice unto the Lord. Give me the revelation to perform acceptable sacrifice unto the Lord. Pray.